Before I get into this episode, I have to issue a warning. This is probably the biggest call-out that I have done in my career to this date. Because I'm going to be pushing on your biggest pain point, which is your deepest unmet need, at the same time as calling into question your sense of personal goodness, be prepared for this episode to trigger you. Just simply know that I wouldn't be doing this if you weren't ready. The first truth that I must present to you before the rest of this episode is the truth that there is no such thing as altruism in the universe. Now, before you start to panic and tell yourself, oh my gosh, that means that people and everything in the universe at large is freaking evil, think again. It's not actually possible in a universe where all is one at the most fundamental level for there to be other. So in a universe where oneness is the basic truth of the universe, (laughs) there can't be altruism. Altruism implies separation. It implies self versus other. Thus, altruism can only exist in an atmosphere of separation, which is not the reality of the universe you live in. This means acting selflessly is not actually possible. And self-sacrifice is, in fact, a self-centered act. To understand more about this, watch my video titled Self-Sacrifice, the Most Self-Centered Thing in the World. Altruism is a mutually beneficial experience. Now, think about what I just said. Mutually beneficial means it doesn't just benefit the person who is on the receiving end of what we would call altruism. It's also a benefit that's being received by the person who is doing the altruistic act. Because altruism is not possible, Only mutual benefit is. Conscious transaction is, in fact, the next step for the human race. (gasps) I know at this point when I just said that, most people are going to be like, Oh my god, I've been trying to transcend transactional relationships since day one. I know you're going to meet this resistance, but please try to keep your mind open. Because mutually beneficial conscious transaction is literally the next step for the human race. When you see something as a part of yourself, which by the way, most people on earth, I mean, by far, by far the majority of people, can't actually conceptualize of oneness on all levels. It's an idea they kind of grasp, but they don't get it, right? Now, up until this point, you're not actually capable of taking something as a part of yourself. But let's pretend you were actually capable of seeing other things and other people as a part of yourself. By taking that thing as a part of yourself, by even having that recognition, suddenly there's this built-in and intrinsic motive that is personally benefiting you in adding to their happiness and their well-being. In other words, there's an automatic built-in kickback for you doing something nice for someone else because they're you. But before people can truly grasp oneness and therefore see other as a part of themselves, conscious transaction is the closest that people can get to love at this point in human evolution. When someone is being altruistic, they're trying to create a mutually beneficial arrangement or transaction without your knowledge. The problem is that right now people are doing this with one another unconsciously and subconsciously rather than consciously. The blind spot that you have is the why you do nice things for other people. To understand the contents of this blind spot, or what's in this blind spot, we have to go back to childhood for something new and different. Right now, no matter how good parenting is, the elements that either are or aren't there in a child's upbringing amounts to an upbringing that is not perfect. This means there are needs you did not get met from your parents or other people or situations in your childhood. But we can narrow this down and say that most people are starving for something very specific. Because they, you, didn't get that thing. You're pretty convinced it's not just going to be given to you. Now, if something isn't given to a person, that means they either have to take it or they have to pay for it. Whenever we feel like we can't meet a need of ours directly because it's not going to be given, we slip into the territory of manipulation. Now, manipulation is not this horribly evil thing that you've been taught it is. It's sort of like a swear word in the human race. All manipulation is 
is a strategy we use to try to meet a need indirectly because we don't think we can get it directly. To understand more about this, you can watch my video titled Meet Your Needs. Essentially what you do is you create a subconscious transaction whereby you do something for someone, this is the altruistic act, so as to meet that need that you're starving for. But because it's subconscious, here's the issue. <laughs> First and foremost, you're not really consciously aware of what you are doing. It's like an internal compulsion. Man, the subconscious mind is smart, right? Because you're not conscious of what you're doing, really, you never express that transaction to the other person. They simply walk into it not knowing you expect anything in return. The problem is, because you're going into this in an unconscious way and you're creating this transaction under the table, the likelihood of this transaction going sour is very high. The other person doesn't know or agree to their side of the deal. This means you're not going to get that need met by doing it. Here's another bummer, because this whole thing happens on a subconscious level. There's very high likelihood that you're going to create this transaction with a person or in a situation that is, let's call it a direct reflection of the original situation in which you didn't get that need met in the first place. It's almost like, let's find somebody exactly like dad who didn't meet this need and try to get this person who's just like my dad to meet that need dad never met. Well, if they're just like dad, the chances of them not ever meeting that need are pretty high. All this boils down to the fact that by doing it this way, you're even less likely to get that need met that you're trying to fulfill through the subconscious transaction. But so you can understand this pattern, I have got more than a few examples. A child is a scapegoat in the family. This means no matter what they do, they can never get alliance from the people in their family. They're always the one who's outcast, the one who's blamed. The opposite of alliance, right? Everybody's triangulating against them. So this big unmet need is alliance. They do nice things when they grow up and become an adult. They do nice things for the people in their life. With this hidden expectation that that is going to secure and guarantee alliance. Now if anybody in their life acts the opposite of allied, meaning you do this nice thing for them and then all of a sudden you hear behind your back that they're talking crap about you, then all of a sudden, how do you feel? A man's father left when he was a child and his mother treated him like a burden who was on his own to do everything by himself. He could never get the need met of someone being totally committed to him. He gives everything to the woman he is with now. He puts her through college, buys her gifts, pays for her rent, helps her with everything, all with the hidden expectation that it will guarantee her lifelong commitment. If she acts not committed in any way, he feels crushed, taken advantage of, and like he's in a one-way relationship. A girl's parents were always busy and off doing other things. They did not help her succeed in any way. She needed, but could never get, togetherness. She rescues men and is with them no matter what, with the idea that doing so will guarantee that they'll do the same in return, to always commit to togetherness. If the man she is with starts to do things that makes her feel like they're not together in life, like walk ahead of her when they're on the street, or decide to spend time with his friends instead of with her, or do something for himself instead of for them together, she will feel completely alone and undervalued and abandoned and used and resentful. A boy is always disapproved of by his mother. So deep down, the unmet need is unconditional approval. When he grows up, he finds people who are pretty disapproved of by others. They have behaviors that others would look at and judge negatively, but he doesn't do this. He never does this. In fact, he unconditionally approves of everything about them, hoping that they're going to do the same in return. He even makes mistakes to test them in their capacity to continue meeting this need. If they begin to disapprove of him in any way, he feels angry, worthless, wrongly, and unfairly treated. A child was never really seen as very special. So they grow up, and they find out that the celebrity is super, super lonely. So they do everything they can do to befriend this celebrity. They do this because, if they're friends with a celebrity, they can feel significant by proxy. This makes them feel special. But this is a transaction. If they're treated in any way by that celebrity or anyone around the celebrity in a way that doesn't make them feel special, they feel insignificant and therefore re-traumatized and vengeful. Celebrities have died as a result of this turn of events leading to friends trying to gain back significance in the celebrity's life by killing them. It's common that in our relationships when we've got the subconscious transaction thing going that we will test 
the strength of how reliable and secure that need meeting actually is. We will act in ways so as to say, are you really committed? Will I really get unconditional approval? Will you really see me as excellent? What if I do this or that? Essentially, we feel so deeply insecure about this one need we're starving for that we constantly have to check how reliable and secure that is. You do nice things for people as a way of creating a hidden subconscious, most of the time, transaction that are guaranteed to get you the needs that you are starving for. On the surface, it's going to seem like altruism. In fact, that's probably the way that other people will treat you. But it's not altruism. Essentially, if this need is not met, right, whatever need that you're creating this subconscious transaction to get, if that need is not met, you're going to act the same way that anyone would act when another person doesn't hold up their end of the deal. Things like betrayed, taken for granted, resentful, and even hatred. Another thing that's interesting to note, when you look back over your life in terms of your relationships, the relationship that is the most painful relationship for you is the relationship in which this transaction was fulfilled the least. What I mean by that is that that need that you did nice things for the other person um, to meet is the least given. For example, if what a woman is looking to get out of her subconscious transaction with a friend is recognize the positive in me, her worst and most painful friendship will be the one in which her excellence is recognized the least in exchange for what she's doing for that other person. The solution to this pattern is not to try to be selfless. That's actually impossible. It's not to be less selfish, and it's not to stop being transactional. Instead, it's to actually start to make these subconscious transactions conscious and express them. To do this, you have to first recognize the need you're trying to fulfill through the subconscious transactions. Look at a nice thing you're doing for someone in your life or thinking about doing and ask yourself, if I were to accept that there is no such thing as altruism in the universe, therefore the reality is that I'm trying to get some need or needs met for myself out of doing this altruistic thing, what is that need? What do I expect in return? What is the feeling state I'm after? What would make me mad to not get as a result of doing this thing? I'm going to give you a hint. This hidden need that you have that is packaged in these hidden transactions that you create is often going to be the thing that you complain the most about other people not doing, offering, or giving. It will also be interesting for you to note that if you can't go directly for this need, then it is likely to come out through your child and either they will carry on the legacy of trying to meet this unmet need or they will actually be the one to meet it instead. You also have to recognize these needs that are inherent in these subconscious transactions that people have by doing nice things for you. If you were to accept that there is no such thing as altruism in this universe, therefore the reality is that they are trying to get some need or needs met for themselves out of doing this altruistic thing, what is that need? What do they expect in return? What is the feeling state they are after? What would make them mad to not get as a result of doing this thing? I know at this point you're probably feeling depressed, right? Because there's this attitude that we have in society that if somebody is doing something for themselves and not for you, if it's an, a kind act, then it's better to just not do it at all. But really, what we should be going for is mutual benefit in all situations. This is what I'm often talking about when I teach about the third option. So mutually beneficial is what we're aimed for in life in general. That's part of integration. So I don't want you to hear everything I've said right now and think, my God, this world is going to hell in a handbasket. I'm not going to ever take anything nice from anybody or do anything nice for anybody ever again. That's not what we're going for. Granted, having a conversation with other people about this whole dynamic tends to trigger a high degree of shame and therefore denial. But ideally, in the best case scenario, when we became aware of what need we're trying to meet subconsciously and manipulatively in this way by doing nice things for them, we would be able to bring up what need we're trying to meet or bring up, let's say if the roles are reversed, let's say somebody's doing something nice for you, 
bringing up whatever need they have so that this can become a conscious and mutually agreed upon transaction. This conversation can sometimes reveal that you will always be barking up the wrong tree trying to get the specific need you have met from that person or in that situation, but this brings you one step closer to a person or situation where you can actually get it. If you can't have this direct conversation, sometimes your altruistic acts <laughs> really don't put you in a place where that's an okay thing, but at least be aware of it. So like, I'm gonna give money to a homeless person. What need is this meeting for me? The more aware you can become of this, the healthier you become as an individual. The other thing you can do is to integrate the part of you that doesn't give you or allow you to have the need you're trying to meet through these subconscious transactions with other people. For example, a woman who's trying to get commitment by doing nice things for men in her life must integrate the part of herself that's not committed to her. A man who's trying to get the recognition of excellence by doing things for other people must integrate the part of him that does not recognize or see him as excellent. To learn how to do this, watch my video titled Parts Work, What is Parts Work and How to Do It. So I hope you can swallow all of that. When you find what need it is that you're trying to meet in this roundabout way, don't shame yourself for it. You're in the same boat as everyone else. Simply become conscious and aware of it to the degree that you're capable of actually going directly for that need with the people and in the situations where you can actually get it. Have a good week. If you liked this video, be sure to share it, like it, and also subscribe to my channel so you can see more content like this. But I want to personally thank you for taking the initiative and having the bravery to step into the space of awareness, not only for yourself, but for the benefit of those around you.